You're listening to Let's Talk Creation, the science podcast that's just for you with Paul Gardner and Todd Wood. All right. Well, let me ask you another question, Paul. Okay. Uh, What's the deal with the Ice Age? What's the deal with the Ice Age? Does it fit into the Bible? Is the Ice Age a biblical thing? Do we find the Ice Age in the Bible? What is the Ice Age? Help me out. Okay. So, uh, today, we have a couple of pretty extensive ice sheets on the continents, right? So we, we have the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets. But we know from geological evidence that the ice sheets were once much more extensive. So uh, we know from the evidence, that the marks that the ice left on the landscape around us, that here in Britain, uh, the ice sheets once extended as far south as London. And in North America, uh, the ice sheets covered virtually all of Canada and extended right down to the Missouri and Ohio rivers. So we know that there were very extensive ice sheets in the past. How do we know that? Yeah, I was well, we say. find we find evidence of uh, ice erosion and ice deposition. So we have evidence of ice erosion, things like over deepened U shaped valleys that once were carved by glaciers. We have evidence of uh, pavements of rock with glacial scratch marks. You know, the, the, the ice sheets entrained lots of debris, lots of rocks and, and, and other, other uh, debris in, in the ice. And as it moved over rock surfaces, it scratched those surfaces. So we have evidence of, of ice erosion. We have evidence of deposition by either the ice or by meltwater issuing from the ice sheets. So we have layers of unsorted uh, pebbly sediments that were deposited by ice. We have ridges of uh, glacial sediment that mark where the sides and the snouts of glaciers once, once existed. Uh, we have evidence of things called glacial erratics, where they're, they're boulders of kind of foreign rock resting on a, a surface where they were just sort of dumped when, when the ice melted. And they don't match the rocks on which they're sitting. They've been transported some, some distance. So, so we ha- can, I, can I cut in here yeah. and just ask a question? That, so are there places... Mm where there are uh, glaciers that are retreating and melting back, where you can see for sure the sorts of evidences you are describing are down, say, downstream from the melting glacier. So you could actually say, oh, yeah, that's, that's a definitely a glacial thing. Can, is, does that exist? Yes, it does. Okay. So you can go to... Uh, areas where there are ice sheets today, and you can see some of these same kinds of features okay, and the same so, kinds of sediments. So we can be reasonably sure yeah. when we find something in, say, Illinois or near London that looks glacial, that it is not simply some other mechanism causing that. It looks just yeah. like a glacial Yeah, feature. and we do have other pieces of confirming evidence as well. So okay. uh, we have, for example... Uh, we, we can study the oxygen isotopes uh, in the shells of microscopic marine organisms in ocean sediments. And we can see evidence that temperatures were much uh, cooler in, in, the, in the Earth's past uh, at the time that the ice sheets were advancing you know, across the Northern Hemisphere. So you know, we, have, we have a whole range of different kinds of evidences that, that, that fit together to indicate that there really was this kind of episode when the ice advanced and was much more extensive than today. One of the other things that I think is very important is what is the geological context of these ice age features. They're basically superficial features that are on the Earth's surface. And very often they are sitting on top of thick marine uh, sediments, which... uh, 
date we think from the flood. They're flood sediments. So it looks as if this ice episode must have happened after the flood because the Ice Age features sit on top of flood sediments. That makes sense, so, yeah. And in fact, it turns out that the flood is the key to understanding how the Ice Age happened. Uh, because during the flood, there was enormous amounts of catastrophic geological activity that added um, prodigious quantities of heat to, to the oceans. So at the end of the flood, uh, we have good reason uh, to think that the oceans were warm. Uh, and, and indeed, we have, we have evidence, as I've already mentioned, in oxygen isotopes that uh, the, the oceans at around the end of the flood were indeed warm. Now, if you have very warm oceans, uh, those oceans then begin to cool down and they cool by evaporation. So you have lots of evaporation from, uh, from the surface of the ocean in the immediate aftermath of the flood. And if you evaporate lots of water from the ocean and it ends up in the atmosphere, um, you also then end up with l lots of precipitation. So we think that the immediate post-flood world was a very warm and wet world but as the oceans cooled down the modeling suggests that uh, the precipitation begins to fall as snow uh, and huge quantities of snow uh, so it, the snow is falling faster than it can melt even during the su summer months and it grows, it accumulates into ice sheets, becomes compacted into ice sheets. And eventually what happens is that the oceans cool sufficiently that um, there's less evaporation from the surface of the oceans, that declines, and there isn't enough snowfall to maintain the ice sheets. And eventually the ice sheets begin to melt, and so the ice, uh, the ice advance comes to an end. So in the creationist model, uh, this ice age is a short-lived episode that is generated by the catastrophic geological activity that happened during the flood, um, but it lasts for a relatively short period of time. The ice sheets um, grow uh, quite quickly. They surge out across uh, parts of the northern hemisphere, and then they melt back. And in fact, we have evidence of catastrophic glacial flooding, mega floods, that are connected to the very rapid um, deterioration of the ice sheets when, when they melted at the end of the end of the ice age. So it sounds like, and this is probably a topic for a future episode, but it sounds mm -hmm. like uh, the flood kind of goes on even after Noah and company exit the ark that there's still stuff happening that is caused by the flood yes so the 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 flood itself you know after noah comes off the ark we, we could say that's the end of the flood when noah steps off the ark but in fact you know when you have a, a worldwide catastrophe like the flood the world is not going to instantly be back to normal <laughs> you know there is inevitably residual effects from a catastrophe of that magnitude yeah and so there are ongoing geological effects in all kinds of ways, not, not just climatic change of the kind that we've, we've just talked about, but in all kinds of other ways too. Uh, but one of those effects is that you, you have this um, recovery of the world after the flood. So you, end up, you, you have an ocean now that is very warm, that cools down over time, uh, and you have a world that is very wet, that gradually dries out, and uh, this culminates in this event that we call the Ice Age. Now, in the, in the conventional model, uh, there were actually multiple episodes of glaciation in the last 2.6 million years. But in the creationist model, um, we actually think there was just one very dynamic ice advance. So we had this sort of one rapid episode but with a very dynamic ice sheet that 
you know, was kind of surging out. So and growing and shrinking growing. and growing and shrinking. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And that gives the appearance of multiple glaciers going over the top of each other and that sort of thing. Yes, so it could potentially it could potentially account for some of those evidences of multiple um, what looked like multiple glacial episodes around, uh, particularly the margins of where where the the ice sheets were. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, well that would be where mm-hmm. it would melt and yeah. refreeze and reaccumulate yeah. and so forth. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Let's Talk Creation. If you have questions, send them to podcast at corsi.org. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T at C-O-R-E-S-C-I dot org. And be sure to let your friends know about Let's Talk Creation. And check us out on social media. Thank you.